Hello and one and all, and yes guys, I am back. So guys, um, if you guys haven't seen my um, uh, ranking on my favourite film decades, uh, definitely go and check that out. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, you know, uh, talk about my favourite film franchises. I'm not necessarily going to rank them, you know, like I was with... Well, I, I ranked... It, I ranked the um, decades uh, in my film decades video, but not all of these are going to be ranking videos. So, um, so you're just going to have to get what you get. So, guys, um, hope everyone out there is staying safe and washing their hands. Hope everyone's staying a good distance from people, and let's all get through this coronavirus and. Let's all stay safe. So guys, as I said, I've wanted to do this for a while, and here we are. My favourite film franchises. I'm not necessarily going to rank them all, I'm just going to um, just work my way through. Not necessarily in alphabetical order, because some movies are switched around, but you get the idea. But yes. But without further ado, let's get into this, shall we? My favourite film franchises. Keep in mind, guys, I might not mention all film franchises out there. Um, you know, I want movies to be have, you know, more than, like, four or five movies. So, if a film franchise is not on there that you love, is not on this video, then I do apologise. It's just whether I wasn't, I've not seen a franchise, or I just didn't think it was good enough to be in here. But without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Alright, first up, okay. Uh, we have the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, guys. Um, yes, I've been uh, into these movies since uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. It was because it was the first one I saw in the cinema back in 2011, where I was 10 years old and... Yeah, I've really loved watching these movies. I since the first Avenger, I've seen every Marvel movie back then, you know. And I such a big fan of the franchise. I've really got into it over the years, especially with all the characters. All the the cast members are great, especially Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Uh, recently had his birthday and happy late birthday to Robert Downey Jr. and he is Iron Man. And yes, other people in the uh, roles such as um, uh, Chris Evans, Captain America, Chris Hensworth, Thor, and yeah, and Tom Holland, Spider Man is great, and yeah, a lot of great movies. You know, you know, you have. First Iron Man, you have the first Avengers, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America Civil War, um, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. If this franchise ended with Avengers Endgame, then I would have been okay with it. Like, like I wouldn't mind it at all if they ended it with uh, Endgame, because it does feel like an end. It's mostly kind of the end to the, um, like, the six original characters, even though some of them are returning, but, you know, it's just great, you know, you know, where you see uh, certain t uh, Infinity Stones, you know, uh, throughout the movies. And yeah, I have reviews of all of these movies, I mean, opinions have changed on them over the years. But if you want to check out, and I've done some ranking videos, last time I did a ranking was um, when, um, oh god, when? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, go on my channel and find out. But yes, that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's right up there, one of my favourite film franchises. Alright, next up on the list. Okay, we have the... Rocky film franchise. Yes, I re I started reviewing these movies back when I started my channel. 
Um, it was Star Wars and Rocky. I started reviewing these movies back then for their new movies, um, Star Wars The Force Awakens and uh, Creed. But Rocky uh, is definitely, um, if, you, if you want to get into fitness, because um, I, I certainly do fitness as well, uh, sometimes, you know, you know, I've done good dumbbell equipment and, you know, but yeah, Rocky is, you know, in the first one, he's basically, you know, proving, you know, he can actually fight, you know, the training montages, I like some of the, I like the biggest, some of the biggest highlights of the Rocky films. You know, in Rocky 2, it's kind of the same as the first one, except there's a bunch of children following him. And, you know, in Rocky 3, where, um, you know, Apollo Creed are starting to become friends, he and Rocky are starting to train, and, you know, in Rocky 4, he's training in Russia. And Creed was a great surprise. I mean, I mean, Creed... The original Creed is a near-perfect film, and I also had a good time with Creed 2 as well, so, yes, some great movies in there, like, obviously, the original Rocky, uh, the first Creed, uh, Rocky Balboa is a, a very good sixth movie in the franchise, you know, um, I don't really think it's a perfect movie, but, because I do think it's slow elements, but it's a very good one. And I do have a great time with uh, some of the sequels that may not be as good as the original, but movies like Rocky 2, 3, and 4, I do have fun time with those movies as well, so. But yeah, they're definitely not as good as the original, but you know what? They're great fun to watch, especially Rocky 4, which has all the great, um, you know, um, fight scenes. Well, Rocky 3 has probably the most fight scenes you know, um, because it has Thunder Lips and uh, Mr. T Clubber thing. Come on, Rock Balboa, let's go! Come on! <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, and Rocky IV has great, um, you know, um, fights as well. And has, you know, Ivan Drago, uh, played by Dolph Lundgren, if he dies. He dies. And the Creed, um, you know, Creed uh, movies, they're really good, you know. You know, in the first one, he go, um, Adonis Creed, Apollo Creed's son, goes up against uh, this British boxer. And it's kind of like a similar formula with the first Rocky, where Adonis Creed is trying to prove he can fight. And Rocky 2, like, if Rocky... No, Cree 2, sorry, Cree 2. Um, like, if Cree 2, you know, basically ended with the whole Rocky series, like, I wouldn't mind it, because I feel like that's kind of an end to, you know, Adonis' Creed um, arc. I mean, if they make a Cree 3, they kind of have a re... They should really have a reason to, whether they're going to bring back a, a Tommy Gunn character or a Mr. T, Clubber Lane character. And Adonis Creed is based in Creed 2 is going against, you know, um, Iron Drago's son, Victor Drago. Boy, that was such a good fight. But one of the best fight scenes, oh my god, is the one take fight in the first Creed, which was bloody awesome. So, yeah. Creed's one of my favourite film franchises, definitely up there. If you've never seen these movies, I highly recommend them. They are so good. You really should check them out. Alright, next film franchise we have is Harry Potter. Yes, Harry Potter. I mean, who thought Harry Potter was not going to be on the, li on the list? But, but yeah, Harry Potter is just a great set of movies, even though I wasn't a big fan of um, Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, but I really enjoyed um, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and I am interested to see where... The next Fantastic Beast movies go because I mean, I'm kind of I'm not giving up in the series, not because I was disappointed with the second Fantastic Beast film, but you know there were good elements of it. 
you know, Jude Law was an excellent Dumbledore in, um, you know, the Grindelwald. So, but yeah, you got some great Harry Potter movies. You got, you know, Prisoner of Azkaban. You've got um, Goblet of Fire. You've got, um, and especially Deathly Hallows Part Two, which is easily my favorite in the franchise, and probably my favorite film that came out in twenty eleven. So yeah, so yeah, so, so yeah, from Philosopher's Stone to um, Deathly Hallows Part Two, it's been ten years. And yes, the Americans do call the first one the Sorcerer's Stone, but I am myself a, a UK person, and this is why the only UK titles I'm sticking to, and that's the Philosopher's Stone. I think it's a fine enough title for the first movie, but Americans, you can do what you want, but yeah. They do it with a lot of movies, and I don't know why, but, you know, the magic is all great. I mean, I love all the characters in there. Um, Sarah Snape is... Easily one of my favourites. Alan Rickman, so iconic. Rest in peace. Um, Harry Potter himself. Uh, Ron Wee. The, um, Hermione Granger, played by Emma Watson. And, you know, have great, you know, um, teams, you know, Gryffindor. And, you know, Slytherin. So, yeah, I've reviewed these movies back then. If you want to hear more thoughts... On the move on each movies, I've done reviews of all the movies. You can check them out on my channel. So yeah, Harry, Harry Potter film series, great film series. Okay, next film franchise might be a controversial one, but it's the Fast and Furious film series. Yes, Fast and Furious. You know, I really enjoy the Fast and Furious film series. Yes, there's elements of the movies are kind of dumb, you know, especially with the earlier ones, which were, you know, straight up race films. Um, you know, the first one I really enjoy. Um, second one's okay. Uh, Tokyo Drift's also kind of okay. Well, Tokyo Drift, Tokyo looks spectacular. Uh, fourth one's easily the weakest for me. But, you know, it does have fun elements in there. But the best one uh, for me is Fast Five. Just, it feels like a heist film, and you basically have um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, Hobbs, as like sort of a villain in that one, and then at the end he sort of becomes good and joins the team, you know, with uh, Dominic and um, Brian O'Connor. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Yeah, sorely missed. One of the saddest deaths from last decade. And yeah, if the seventh one, like with Avengers Endgame, with the cinematic, Marvel Cinematic Universe, if Furious 7 ended Fast and Furious again, I'd be fine with it, I wouldn't mind it at all, because it truly does feel like an ending. And yes, I did have a fun time with Fast and Furious 8, and Hobbs and Shaw was a great time, and I'm curious to see what F Furious 9 is doing, it's delayed next year because of coronavirus, but... And oh my god, if you have seen that trailer, you know what I'm talking about. This looks like it could be the dumbest of the ones if you... Of the movies, if you've seen what I mean. And if you've seen the trailer and you know what I mean. But yeah, Fast and Furious, I really enjoy the film series. You know... They're great, you know, guilty pleasure Taco Bell movies, you know. But hey... It is what it is. That's Fast and Furious. Alright, next film franchise. Okay. Next up we have is the Mission Impossible film series. Yes, Mission Impossible film series. Um, you know, it's great uh, Tom Cruise series. It's Tom Cruise's biggest movies. It's like his only series. And yes, there's, um, and yes, there's other two movies that have sequels, you know, Top Gun and Jack Reacher. But Mission Impossible is the fran is, is like the biggest thing that Tom Cruise has ever done. You know, the first one's a very good um, one. Uh, second one's easily the weakest, but not terrible. Because, you know, slow-mo shots, which doesn't really feel Mission Impossible at all. And, and you know, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt, is just basically playing a playboy in that one. Because that's not what Mission Impossible is. 
the third one, directed by J.J. Abrams, um, brought the series back very nicely. Uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol was awesome, especially with uh, with um, Tom Cruise climbing on one of the tallest buildings in the world. You know, probably the best stunt work yet for Mission Impossible up to that point. And you have Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, which was really, really good. You know, it has, yeah, it has probably one of the, probably the best motorbike scene in the series. And Fallout was also great as well, which comes to Mission Impossible Fallout, which, oh my god, blew me away. Had no idea what to expect after seeing the trailers. But yeah, action's my favourite genre of film. Second favourite being crime. But action is my favourite franchise because whenever I'm bored out of my mind what to do, I just like to sit down and watch a good little action movie. But this is one of the, this is probably the best that I think um, last decade has had for action movie wise, in my opinion. Because it has everything you would want in an action movie. You know, a fight scene in a in a bath uh, room. Uh, or a loo room, whatever you want to call it, but, um, a helicopter fight scene, oh my god, uh, a running scene, and, uh, and another, um, you know, motorbike scene, and a great villain played by, um, you know, Henry Cavill, who plays August Walker, and that, the, who's the assassin in this movie, like, oh my god, that, it's easy, a big twist, um, one of the biggest plot twists uh, I've seen uh, where, you know, um, August Walker's the villain in there. Because that, for a while, um, he was on um, Tom Cruise's side, you know, Ethan Hunt's side, and the IMF. But again, guys, I reviewed the movies on my channel. If you want to hear more thoughts, um, Go check out my movie reviews, they're on my channel. Alright, next film franchise. It's a lot. Next up we have is the James Bond film series. Oh yeah, James Bond. Yeah, this is easily in my top five favourite film franchises. I love it so much. And by the way, rest in peace, um, Honor Blackman. She unfortunately passed away just today. And a good reason why I'm making my favourite film franchises had to include James Bond on there, had to mention the passing on um, on a Blackman, who plays Pussy Galore in who played Pussy Galore in Goldfinger. You're one of the great Bond girls out there. Probably the greatest from the uh, classic area. Rest in peace, you will truly be missed. But yes. James Bond uh, is just my favourite action film series because it has pretty much everything that you would that everyone likes really you know you have girls in there you have v great villains you have cars you have locations you have stunt work and you have um, you know six actors playing Bond you know um, Sean Connery is easily the best Bond but Daniel Craig probably might be my favourite because I love Casino Royale and Skyfall but yes we will get to those reviews um, hopefully in September when I review Casino Royale since No Time to Die has been delayed so I'm hopefully going to review Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace in September and um, Skyfall and Spectre in October and then you know November of course No Time to Die so far I've reviewed the Bond films from Doctor No up to Die Another Day. Another day. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, other Bonds I like. I like uh, Piers Brosnan. He's a great Bond. Um, I also like um, uh, Roger Moore. Um, he's, yeah, he's probably the only Bond to have uh, sort of a... I, I know a lot of people don't like Roger Moore, but I think he's a fine Bond. You know, he's not... You know, he's not the best, but but I think it's a nice change for campiness. I mean, some of it doesn't work in some of the movies, 
but give me a second. There we go. Um, you know, it's you know, it's nice to see uh, every Bond uh, give something new. And Timothy Dalton was the first Bond to show darkness in there, especially with License to Kill, which is easily one of the most underrated Bond films. Other underrated Bond films, you know, there's On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is very underrated. Uh, George Lazenby's one and only Bond film. Uh, other underrated ones, Live and Let Die. That gets bashed for some reason, and I don't know why. Come on. Paul McCartney, what else can you go wrong with that? But yeah, everybody has their opinion, but yeah. Uh, Spy Who Loved Me, of course, being one of the best. Goldfinger from Russia With Love, Doctor No. Uh, Golden Eye. And yes, it does have some silly ones. Some silly guilty pleasure ones in there, like, you know, Octopus. See, the world is not enough. Uh, the Man with the Golden Gun. Uh, Diamonds Are Forever, Moonraker. But, you know, I don't pretty much hate any of most of the Bond films, I mean, but yes, Quantum of Solace and Spectre we will uh, talk about soon, but yeah, honestly, I don't think any of the Bond movies are, you know, just, you know, disastrous or anything, I don't think any of them are disasters, I don't think that any of them are terrible, really, because, because, I mean, some of them have... Mm. Uh, cheesy moments, you know, especially in Die Another Day, with those one-liners, and, you know, and, of course, probably the worst moment of the series, where he's surfing CGI, da 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 like, if you've seen, if you want to see my reviews from Doctor No all the way to Die Another Day, they're on my channel so far, so, yes, James Bond, Gotta put it on there if you're into action movies and spy in general. Alright, and last but certainly not least we have is Star Wars. Yes guys, you all saw this coming. Star Wars. Star Wars is my childhood. I love Star Wars. You know, yes you have its misses like Attack of the Clones and Rise of Skywalker, but but come on, Star Wars changed everything, it changed cinema forever, and you know, it really um, made us get into film, especially me, you know, like, Star Wars 1977, A New Hope, if it was a standalone movie, I mean, that would have been okay, fair enough. You know, it's a great movie all on its own. A New Hope is so amazing. You know, great locations, Tatooine, which is which is uh, A New Hope's uh, main uh, planet. You know, Tatooine, and you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back, of course. Hoth, um, Return of the Jedi, uh, Endor, Force Awakens, Jakku, and of course, you know, Phantom Menace, uh, Nova. Which is, yeah, which is, yeah, not the best Star Wars movie, if you ask me. But the prequels, in my opinion, are half good and half bad, because, you know, you know, there's some good fights, Jedi fights in, um, you know, Revenge of the Sith. There's good stuff in Revenge of the Sith. And, you know, the pod racing I like, and um, the Jedi fight scene uh, in Phantom Menace with Darth Maul is probably the best Jedi fight we've ever had in the prequels. But you know what? Phantom Menace isn't very good, but but it does have some enjoyable moments in there. And Rise of Skywalker did have enjoyable moments, but Rise of Skywalker just was not a big fan of. Yeah, probably the most disappointing movies I've ever seen. Yeah, it is right up there. Yeah, I just... Although I do love elements of Rise of Skywalker where they, where you get to see um, Han Solo back, you know, not uh, not a Force ghost, but a piece of um, Ben Solo's memory, you know, and you got some cool action going on, but there's just, you know, ma 
just some moments that just don't work in there, especially um, what uh, Ray and Ben Solo do after um, the Emperor's death. I'm not going to say what it is, but yeah. But yeah, Rise of Skywalker is probably the worst written Star Wars movie because it's it's so all over the place. Like, it feels like J.J. Um, Abrams um, didn't know what to do after, you know, um, in Last Jedi, um, you know, Ryan Johnson killed off Snoke. But, oh no, Snoke's gone. God, I don't know what to do. Just have to bring the Emperor in and, yeah, bring back, make it like a cinematic universe, fair enough, you know, bring back some old faces, and hear some previous Jedis, but yeah, but come on, I still love Star Wars, it's my childhood, um, yes, you got the spin-off movies, you know, Rogue One, I do have fun with, and Solo a Star Wars Story is okay, I'm not a fan of Solo a Star Wars Story, but it's an okay Star Wars movie, but, but yeah, definitely not as bad as people are considering it to be. It's just an okay Star Wars movie. But yeah, but yeah, the locate, but yeah, the planets, the Jedi fights, all the characters are so iconic. Darth Vader, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, just it has it all. Star Wars has everything. That you would want, you know, just great adventures and yeah. Oh yeah, one more um, X Men. Yes, X Men's a franchise. I forgot to add. I'm gonna talk about that next, and that should be it. Um, at last but certainly not least, we have X Men. Um, yes, X Men's a great. Um, you know, you know, I kind of wanted to tie it with um. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, but at the same time, um, way before um, Dark Phoenix, it wasn't by um, Disney Plus. But the but the X Men movies, um, if you have Disney Plus, they're surprisingly on there because I recently checked them; they're on there. So hey, you know X Men's great. You have some great entries. You know X Men Two, Days of Future Past, First Class, and and especially Logan. You know, again, like Endgame, Deathly Hallows Part 2, some of the best finales out there. You know, Logan, easily one of the best comic book movies from last decade. You know, yeah, just so emotional. You know, Hugh Jackman and Robert Downey Jr. Uh, ended their characters so well on a high note. Again, if Logan ended the series, I wouldn't mind it at all. But, but you know, unfortunately we had Dark Phoenix, which wasn't very good. And yeah, X-Men Origins Wolverine has got... Yeah. And Lost, Jan and Lost Stand, which... Yeah, let's not talk about those. But, but Hugh Jack... But I only own all of the Hugh Jackman movies because of Hugh Jackman. He is Wolverine. So yeah, that's the X-Men series. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, and that was my uh, favorite film franchises that I talked about. So, uh, I'm I may have left off some film franchises. You know, it's hard to talk about all of them, but this video is nearly up to 30 minutes. I'm seeing it right now on my um, webcam, but it's okay. It's nice to talk movies. I think we can all agree it's a good time. Um, to talk about movies, especially when events are delayed by uh, madness things like the virus, but you know what? We are what we are in anyway. But comment down below, let me know guys, what are some of your favourite film franchises out there? Uh, let me know below in the comments and let's have a great discussion. Um, if I left any off of the list, uh, let me know in the comments. So yeah, as always, comment, like, subscribe. All the social media links will be in the description below. Don't forget to click the notification bell before you leave. And for my next video, uh, which I don't know what it's going to be, I shall see you guys then, and peace. Stay safe.